Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, Chapter 3 At that time, Sigurd Hring had power over Denmark. He was a powerful king, and was famous from that one war where he battled with Harald Hilton at Brevala, and Harald fell before him, as has become known throughout all the northern regions. Sigurd had one son, who was called Ragnar. He was a large man, fair in appearance and with good intelligence, generous with his men, but stern with his foes. Soon after he had come of age, he got himself troops and warships, and became one of the greatest warriors, so that hardly anyone was his match. He heard what Earl Herod had spoken, but he gave it no heed, and let on as if he didn't know about it. He had made for himself garments in a wondrous fashion. They were shaggy breeches and a fur coat, and when they were done, he had them boiled in pitch. Afterwards, he kept them stored away. One summer, he took his war host to Gotland and he anchored his ships in a hidden creek, which was a short distance from where the earl ruled. And when Ragnar had been there one night, he woke early in the morning, rose up and take, uh, took the same armor which was mentioned before, put on the armor, and took a great spear in his hand and went off the ship alone. And there, where the sand was, he rolled in the sand. And before he went his way, he took the nail holding the spearhead to the shaft of the spear, and then went from the ship to the earl's gate, and came there early in the day so that when he came, all the men were still asleep. Then he turned towards the bower. And when he came to the wooden fence where the snake was, he attacked it with his spear. He thrust the spear at it, and then he pulled it back to himself, and then he attacked again. That thrust struck the snake's spine, and then he twisted the spear so that the spearhead came off the shaft. There was such a great din at the snake's death throes that all the bower shook. And then Ragnar turned away, and then a jet of blood came and struck him between his shoulders. But that did not harm him, since his clothes that he had made protected him. And those who were in the bower woke with the din and went out of the bower. Then Thora saw a great man going from the bower and asked him his name and whom he wanted to find. He stopped, and he spoke this first. I have risked my famous life, beautiful one, fifteen winters old, and I vanquished the earthfish. Near misfortune, a swift death for me, save that I have pierced well to the heart the ringed salmon of the heath. And then he went on his way and did not speak more with her, and the spearhead stood in the wound afterwards, but he had the shaft with him. When she heard this verse, she understood what he had said about her, about his errand, and thus how old he was. And then she wondered to herself who he might be, and she thought she did not know whether he was a human being or not. Since it seemed to her that his growth was as large as it said about monsters at the age that he was. Then she turned into the bower and went to sleep. And when men came out in the morning, they became aware that the snake was dead, and it was stabbed with a large spear, and the spearhead stood fast in the wound. Then the earl had the spearhead removed, and it was so large that few could have used it as a weapon. Then the earl considered what he had said about that man who killed the snake, and he thought he didn't know whether a human being had done this or not. And then he discussed with his friends and daughter how he should search after him. It seemed likely that the man who had won it would afterwards seek to have the reward. She advised him to have a large thing summoned, and command those who do not want to have the earl's anger and are in any way able to attend the thing to come here. If any is the man who gave the snake its death wound, he shall then have the spear shaft which goes with the spearhead. That seemed promising to the earl, and he had a thing called. When the day came, when the thing was to take place, the earl came and many other chieftains, many men came. And thus ends chapter 3.